You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Yourself, empower others, empower the world. This is Sedona Soul Balance with your host, Anke Otto Wolf. Shamanic life coach, energy healer, Anke Otto Wolf has revolutionized soul healing by breaking down a complex challenge into a simple and universal healing. So now, please welcome the host of Sedona Soul Balance, Anke Otto Wolf. This is the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, bringing to you live Sedona Soul Balance with your host, Anka Adewolf. A heartfelt hello from Sedona and thank you for being with me. Why, what a great show I have for you today. My guest today is a woman who overcame deep suffering, adversities, and challenges galore. Now, if you can relate to this, then please stay with us because the path this woman has chosen might even have some answers or guidelines for your own situation. My guest's personal journey culminated in becoming a sought-after leader of transformation by bringing much light and inner peace to individuals, the community in general. Her accomplishments include being a founding member and chair of the Sedona International City of Peace. She's also a founding member of the Mental Health Coalition, Verde Valley. And since 10 years, she is a board member of the International Film Festival here in Sedona, Arizona. So please help me welcome Marguerite Joy Weaver. Hello, Margaret, and thank you for being on my show. You're so welcome. Thank you, Anka. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, my dear. This is really exciting that you said yes to come onto the show. I'm just going to jump right into it. You have accomplished so much, and yet your personal journey was far from a bed of roses. Isn't that right? Yes. Uh, so, and typically, yeah. Typically, that's a path that many of us take where we have many accomplishments and at the same time, many challenges. Exactly. So would it be possible for you to share how you found the courage and inner peace to go on this path and overcome those challenges? Well, I was really, um, you know, I, one of the things that I had done uh, besides the things that you mentioned was I was a leader of transformational programs for about 17 years and someone that not only for myself but provided it for many others was to have people create transformation in their life and create extraordinary possibilities for them to live by and to manifest. And uh, I had done that in my career. I did that in a a marriage that was uh, 27 years and um, moving here to Sedona and with a large community of friends and very successful in business and was, was one of the things where people might look at my life and think, you know, that I really had everything and it was extraordinary and there were a couple of things that I had taken on um, that uh, in my life, one of which was to take care of a sister of mine who had schizophrenia and I was not able to continue with it and, and uh, turn to my, her, our family for the support. And with 
with uh, 12 brothers and sisters and her parents both alive was somewhat shocked that, you know, they weren't there to help take care of her. Uh, So this started a spiral for myself of disconnecting me from those people and communities and families that I really had felt that I had had, you know, connection and support with. Mm-hmm. And subsequently, so that, she, she did. And go ahead. Yeah, does that mean that you had to reestablish this for yourself, like uh, support and family? And when you learned how to find that inner peace, that living without stress, and when you you mentioned that you have this support now here in Sedona, did you feel that? Uh, you had to reestablish that uh, support? Well, not only reestablish, as I was saying, it, you know, the, the deterioration of the community and the support began with my sister, but then it proceeded with my um, separation and uh, divorce from my husband of 27 years. And in that... I went on a journey. Primarily what happened was I took on, you know, I've been taking care of so many other people. I really took on that what was most important was my own self-care. Oh, that and, sounds wonderful. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I took that on, you know, as my main focus. And in, in so doing, one of the key things I took on at the beginning was reformulating my community of friends and family and only really including mutual, respectful, and nurturing relationships as I began this path. So what you're saying, what I hear you say is that these these, uh, choosing friends and, and relationships that benefit you was one of the steps you consciously took in your growth And um, tell me, can you share, how did you find the courage, that inner must, that inner, that inner courage to take these steps to completely start anew, especially emotionally? Well, I, uh, part of it was more that uh, out of necessity, Mm -hmm. um, And, you know, how I always related to myself has been someone who's been resilient. Uh, So I rarely take on a victimized role and realize that I've got to pick myself up from my bootstraps. (laughs) And at the same time, there were friends uh, that... uh, were in that network that I said um, I was committed to that um, made some suggestions that I was open to get involved with. So that, did, I, you mentioned to yeah, me yeah. that you were able to uh, do some training, some really um, soulful personal training. Um, that really helped you. What was that in particular? What made you feel that gave you the most uh, inner peace or courage? What kind of training was that or is? Yeah, so um, one of the friends, or actually it was two friends, uh, one of them has a sister who puts on various retreats in Thailand, and it was a Vipassana retreat, which is a a meditation, silent meditation retreat. Mm -hmm. And she happened to be in Sedona right when this was happening and mentioned it to me and not even knowing what Vipassana was, not even, um, I'd been to Thailand, but not to this. I just said yes. And then (laughs) I also, and then, and then I also, um, had a college friend who uh, Margaret, and uh, said, allow me allow me to interrupt. Um, that's how it is with life uh, radio. We have to go to a break. 
and then we'll come right. right back and we want to hear more of that. This is the BBM okay. Global Network and Tune In Radio with your host Anka Adewolf for Sedona Soul Balance. We will be right back. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran-owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. This is your host, Anka Adderwolf, with the Sedona Soul Balance Show, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We have a very special guest today, Margaret Joy Weaver. She is the um, founder, co-founder. Uh, of the International City of Peace, Sedona International City of Peace. And just before the break, we were speaking about how Margaret found her inner uh, strength and power to go on after a life of quite um, a great career, but privately many challenges. So, Margaret, please be so kind and tell us how you fell into this wonderful thing about India. So, uh, I, in addition to going to Thailand, I went to uh, an organization called O&O Academy, and, um, and, which is a philosophy and meditation school in India, and began a program, 21 Days, that ultimately now has turned into three years, and I've been over there probably uh, a total of about 140 days uh, engaged in um, studies and uh, teachings and processes and, a, and an incredible, um, you know, uh, <laughs> wisdom school for enlightenment yes. and um, yes. transformation transforming consciousness. So that is exactly what I, I believe uh, has taken you on that path to help others with that. And now with this space, I would love to talk to you about your work with uh, uh, Sedona International City of Peace, because what fascinates me about this, the not to 2019 platform, I see this it's being laid out in a very special way and to reach also children. And that is what coincides with the goals of Sedona Soul Balance and our own Stop Bullying Project, Tali Rands, and how moms and kids can prevent bullying, how we can teach listening that can change so much within us, and how parents can become really 
parenting parents in these insanely hectic and fearful driven times. So Margaret, let me ask you, is there a program or a project within the city of peace that speaks to parents and kids about inner peace and transformation? Oh, let's see. So, um, in terms of a specific program, um, we haven't done a specific program like that, but what we mm -hmm. have done, pro, pro, some of the programs is um, we have been very committed that, uh, and this is along with the Mental Health Coalition, that being able to introduce some meditation practices into the parent-child relationship, as well as for those with mental health issues, um, could make a big difference. So yes. we've had we've had meditation Mondays here in Sedona every week for the past uh, almost past year, and we have brought together many of the meditation practitioners here in Sedona. Uh, to have us as a community come together, not not just in one modality, but to really have the collective energy of us meditating together, empower the parents and children along with members of our community. And we've had mm -hmm. sometimes up to 30, 35 people at these Meditation Mondays. And that's um, very interesting. We also, oh, go ahead. Yeah, um, you mentioned within the City of Peace work uh, about a charter school. And um, we also, I also heard you say something about you're the mom of a girl from India. That peace, that inner peace. Can you share that? Yeah, so um, the work with the charter school um, and I don't have the name of the person who has the program. I'm really sorry in mm -hmm. front of me, okay. but we, we, we introduced um, his program uh, into the charter school with a focus on kindness. And uh, so that wasn't as oriented towards inner peace as much as it is about in relating to people and that as a fundamental value, kindness would be important for these, uh, young young people who right. were from kindergarten to sixth grade. Um, That's so uh, that was that that was something that was uh, valuable for the students as well as the teachers, and they then kind of created from that. Um, and then in terms of uh, my uh, now now daughter, actually from India, she came here as a foreign exchange student. Um, as part of the PAC organization, which has the foreign exchange students for high schools with a mm -hmm. commitment for peace among nations. So that's the thing with the city of peace that it's, you know, we have a commitment for inner peace and, uh, inner, inner peace, inner, inner joy. And at the same time, joy and, and peace in our relations and moving out into our community and into the world. So with my connection to India, this was a very natural thing to have a student here from India. And she ultimately uh, came here and uh, finished her high school at Birdie Valley School here and is now a freshman at Northern Arizona University. And I'm co-parenting her with her parents. That sounds absolutely beautiful. And um, I remember you mentioned something about uh, the work you're doing, uh, the City of Peace, um, among teenagers. And I guess that what you just shared about your uh, daughter from India is what you are doing for and with teenagers to recognize that uh, peace around the world in the community, in the family, starts with inner peace. And I assume that is also why these uh, Monday, uh, Monday meditations are so uh, successful for the women in the community. 
Margaret, when we come back from the break, I would love to talk to you about this beautiful program called The Beautiful State. It's fascinating to me, and I would love to share that with our listeners. So when we come back from the break, we talk about that program. And this is BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, bringing to you live the Sedona Soul Balance Show with your host, Anka Otto-Wolf. We will be right back. Psychologist, master certified coach, and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with accompanying empowerment cards she is a spirit book of the year gold medal living now book award winner and her book is a number one amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the living now spirit book of the year an inspirational speaker mj will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life your life did not just happen to you you chose it which means you can change it visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024 this is the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio bringing to you live the Sedona Soul Balance Show with your host, Anka Otto Wolf. And we have this exciting show today with our guest, Margaret Joy Weaver from Sedona. Margaret, just before the break, we spoke about um, the inner peace and how you are sharing this with your um, daughter from India and charter schools in the community with women and groups in meditation. This work, international work with peace, is something that is super fascinating. And I know from our conversations that you are teaching a program called The Beautiful State that have you have um, learned and now you're sharing it. Would you be able and willing to share many, many details about this program and how our listeners may be able to benefit from that, please? Yes, so um, this is one of the programs that's now offered from O&O Academy that I had mentioned earlier. Uh, and so those of us that have taken programs, as I mentioned the number of days that I've been there, uh, we were trained to lead this program called The Beautiful State. And um, Krishnaji and Preetaji, who are two of the four founders of o Academy, one of the things that Krishnaji says which is the premise of this course, is really that there's two states of being. Either we're in a stressed state, suffering state, or we're in a beautiful state. And there's no third state. And that in and of itself was a very, very powerful thing to begin to see. And For me, when I discovered that for myself, I started to see the level at which I had been living in these stress and suffering states, and I really didn't have tools to move into this 
inner core state of peace and calm and joy, which we could call the beautiful state. So is- the, the, the program is a two-day program, and it's literally designed to dissolve the destructive p- patterns of our unconscious. And much of the work that I had done before was with more or less our conscious mind, our, you know, what we, we might not know what it is, but it was generally within our conscious mind. So this really allowed us to delve into our unconscious mind and literally awaken to the power of higher consciousness, universal intelligence, source, whatever they call it. (laughs) <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Um, isn't the state, whether the state of stress or the beautiful state, isn't that a choice everybody can make and ought to make and learn to make? It would be great to say that it's a choice. Uh, and I worked with choice for a long, long time time in my previous um, leading. Uh, The thing is, is that there's patterns that we have that are so deep that regardless of our mind making those choices, our capacity really to awaken into a new conscious state is a whole different uh, methodology. So it does require... It does require something distinct. When you uh, have the uh, participants in front of you, how you know, for this course, uh, for this two-day uh, course, and you explain what you just said to us, is it possible that to explain how do you do it with a role model, with um, them reading something? How do you convey that it is sometimes not a choice? Um, How do your participants find out whether they choose to be in one or the other or whether it is this deep um, pattern um, that most of us have experienced. So how do you make it clear to them? Go ahead. Yeah. So first of all, it's experiential. Mm -hmm. Uh, Many of there, it's very, it's a very simple program with, you know, transformative contemplations, meditations, where people have new insights from those. And then it also includes uh, some very um, designed uh, meditation practices and blessings that are able to move people into a complete new state that gives them an opportunity, first of all, to have courage to see the truth about what they may not have been able to see for themselves. And it's an internal journey. So there isn't a lot of talking back and forth, explanations Mm -hmm. back and forth, but the processes are designed in a way that you see things you hadn't seen before. And then there's this, these, there are these blessings and this connection to universal intelligence, again, the divine in whatever form that is, uh, that allows for the beginning of this awakening process into a beautiful state. This is fascinating, very fascinating. It does remind me a little bit and uh, connects a little bit. My my theme in my teaching is um, reach a soul, transform a life. And when you say these meditations and all that, that is when we can um, find the way to the stress or the beautiful state. And let's talk a little bit more about that when we come back from the break, if that is okay with you, Margaret. Absolutely. Thank you. So right now, dear listener, we're going to another break and have listened to a sponsor. 
This is the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, bringing to you live the Sedona Soul Balance Show with your host, Anka Arubo. We're right back. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knutson's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. This is the Sedona Soul Balance Show with your host, Anka Arrow-Wolf, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Just before the break, my wonderful guest, Margaret Joy Weaver in Sedona, was talking about a program she teaches, and that is called The Beautiful State. Margaret, we left off before the break how... This is possible for participants to find the, the stress state or the beautiful state. And we talked about whether it's a choice or not. Would you kind of be able to go into it and see and share with us where the point of change or transformation might take place within the individual? Yeah. So when we have this courage to see the truth about ourselves that we hadn't seen before. And not just at an intellectual level, but really, as I have said, at an experiential level. So one of the things also that really opens in our state of being is our emotional and our energetic state of being. So, um, the course is broken into harmony with oneself. And this really is somewhat uh, a turning point for people. And we start with because much of the conflict that we see outside of ourselves actually lives within ourselves. And when we can begin to see where that conflict is and has lived, we're able to bring ourselves to a wholeness and a state of peace within ourselves. So that's really the first awakening that people have and then are able to experience not only in their, in the power of consciousness, but also with a connection to the, to the divine in whatever form that is or universal intelligence, but then to move into our harmony in our relationships. Uh, this this is an incredible move from really clearing out, again, from the unconscious, those deep hurts and disappointments and moving us into a state of appreciation. Um, and that's a huge, huge shift for people. Uh, and then the third area is harmony at work. 
Um, so that's the third area we address is much of our work tends to come from either a state of anxiety, a state of necessity, um, a state where we of survival or proving our self-worth and to be able to move into another whole place of really discovering our interconnectedness mm-hmm. and the, um, the, the, let me ask you something yes uh, i i hear you that shift uh in all three um parts harmony is the uh, word, the value. And in harmony, mm-hmm. harmony in relationship, you mentioned that this is especially that is a huge step into clarity and truth. Um, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, um, there are people that have participated in the program that had pretty much uh, uh, either severed a relationship with someone in their life and or were on the way to severing that relationship and in this in the in the program uh, basically dissolved those aspects of their, as I say, the unconscious, and we're able to reconnect and bring forth this spark of love and appreciation that had been missing. Mm-hmm. Um, I hear you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, it, it, the what you're referring to is not only relationship as a woman or a man. It is a relationship also, it can be, with your children, with the neighbor, with a relationship in any way at work when we're out from nine to five. Um, these, and especially the relationship with oneself, which probably links right away to harmony with self. Would you agree yeah. to that? Or do you have do you have any thoughts on that we can share with our listeners? Yeah. So the primary, primary uh, focus is to bring a harmony and beautiful state to oneself. Mm-hmm. Um, the pri- primary uh, focus of the entire, the beautiful state is just like the beginning um, the entire uh, philosophy for the this education is to move us from eye consciousness to one consciousness. And you know, when we're in a suffering state, predominantly our focus is on ourselves, and there for sure is not any harmony within ourselves. And unless we have that capacity to to bring resolution and peace to ourselves, we can pretty much forget about being able to be in relationships, you know, that, that are nurturing, that are empowering, that, um, again, we can go through the challenging times together. doesn't mean we're not going to have those challenging times, but we can bring ourselves to a beautiful state in those challenging times. Exactly. And that reminds me a little bit of the uh, law of attraction. When we are in that state of stress and, and negativity or set, and the law of attraction, we just bring in more of that. And what you're showing with this program is to make this harmony within ourselves, for ourselves, larger than the uh, attraction of negative energy. So uh, when we come back from the break, Margaret, I really would like to go into this a little bit deeper if we can. And also I'm going to ask you how all this work has given much to you and what. 
So we're coming back right away. This is your host, Anka Utterwolf, with the Sedona Soul Balance Show, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We will be right back. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted. And every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope. There is help there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful happy. This is the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio bringing to you live the Sedona Soul Balance Show with me, your host, Anke Otterwolf. I'm welcoming back Margaret Joy Weaver in Sedona. And we were talking about Margaret teaching this beautiful program, um, the beautiful state, the state of being. And our last uh, interaction was about harmony with self, harmony in relationships, and harmony at work. Margaret, this is beautiful. Please tell us and talk about how, how those three points which you're teaching in this course, um, create this inner peace, this, yeah, the quiet place. Please share that with us. Great. Well, basically, right from the beginning, we move ourselves into this safe, quiet space. This is why I'm leading this course. Uh, having led many others previously. So there's various contemplations, as I mentioned. There are uh, meditative practices with breath. Uh, There there are also various uh, blessings, one's called a diksha, which besides awakening us into new states of being, There's literally brain shifts that happen during those. And uh, this quietness is experienced. And then you leave with a meditative practices that allows for you to bring forth the manifestations of these heartfelt desires. So this is a heart centered program, not a mind centered program and a spirit centered program, not a mind centered program. So when we experience something in our heart and we experience a connection, not only with something way larger than ourselves. And again, we can call it whatever we may. Um, But when we experience that connection to source, that connection to the divine, and we expand our consciousness, 
And we also get very connected to the interconnectedness of all things. We leave with this meditation practice that opens you, everyone up to a limitless field of consciousness. And this practice called the soul sink um, has this capacity from that space to bring forth heartfelt desires and have them be manifested. So I have had uh, parents with their son who's uh, 11. They were in the course and the 11 year old and the parents are doing that program, doing that meditation together. And the 11 year old loves the meditation to a point he put Mm. the URL connection on the parents' phone. So getting to that quiet place and unfolding from that quiet place, um, the things that really matter to us that can then be manifested can only happen when we're in in the harmony in the places that I mentioned. So it's a real transformation for people. Yeah, that that really sounds like it. It's it, it makes so much sense, Margaret. And uh, coming to your uh, the example of the eleven year old, it is amazing how many times we hear that all oh, kids are not interested in that. That is not true. We don't give them enough credit. Children are interested in quietude, in in inner peace, inner strength. So any program, just like my program, Tali Rands or Sedona Soul Balance, and your programs, your harmony work, inner harmony work, children are open to this, don't you think? Actually, more than open. So the harmony (laughs) isn't so much the inner harmony. It's not so much the inner harmony. It's a transformation of consciousness. So as adults, we have a lot more in the way of being connected to higher consciousness and to consciousness itself. Children don't have that. So they're hungry for it. They're already here. They don't have, they don't have the patterning. They don't have the, you know, the big hurts and disappointments and the, the, the levels of things that are in the way of us just being clear of all that. So my days in India, didn't have anything, it was mostly clearing out all of that. The thing about the beautiful state, what's great is it's here, people can go to India, but to be able to clear out what's in the way of being one with, uh, with all and the experience of one consciousness versus what we live in, which is I consciousness, to have that experience starting with the beautiful state uh, really is an, is a new era. I call it really an, a revolution for humanity. This is amazing, Margaret. This is really impressive work you're doing there. And it's wonderful to hear you say all this. And um, would it be okay if I give your um, website so people can contact you and maybe participate? Yes. Okay. That would be www.ooacademyus.com. OO No, USA. USA. USA Academy. Yes. OOacademyusa.com. No, no, that's not it. Let me say it. Please do. O-O, yeah. OO Academy. U-S-A dot org. Okay, wonderful. So, dear listener, you have the choice and chance to speak to Margaret on her email. That would be margaretjoyweaver at gmail.com. So, Margaret, I would love to talk to you about what this journey of learning, of recognizing your own talents, abilities, and to share with you, talk to you about that, what this journey has given you personally. And I'd love to do that when we come back. But right now, we need to go again to a break. This is Anka with Sedona Soul Balance coming to you live 
on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We will be right back. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. This is your host, Anka Otto Wolf, with the Sedona Soul Balance Show coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio just before the break. I was speaking with Margaret Joy Weaver, our wonderful guest today from Sedona, about her uh, teaching this in amazing program called The Beautiful State, the state of our own being and how we can improve and feel better, harmony. It is a great program. But now, Margaret, I would love to talk to you and ask you, in all of your work helping individuals, families, and communities, not only locally, but worldwide with the International City of uh, uh, Peace, what has this entire journey given you personally? Well, thank you for the question, Anka. I would say that in the accomplished life I lived, underneath I was driven, um, again, concerned, anxious, stressed. And what I also discovered, even mostly irritated a lot of the time because people weren't necessarily doing things that I wanted them to do or doing them the way I wanted them to do it. And with the discovery that along the way of this journey, I have found not just inner peace, but also inner joy and a joy in living and allowing for life to unfold, a joy in living in the flow of life rather than having everything strategized and worked out and a plan. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed connecting with people in a very spiritual and heartful way. Um, And so new people have entered into my life. And in contributing the programs with the beautiful state and also with the work with City of Peace, uh, just being able to have a more divinely guided purpose in my life really a spiritual vision, as we say at Ono Academy, a spiritual vision for just bringing forth a joy that we've never experienced as individuals and community and living together. Ah, 
Thank you. That is uh, that is a summation. So when you work with this, Margaret, with this beautiful state, that not only that you can share that with others, it gives you and your entire work uh, gives you this satisfaction, this uh, deep inner quietude that of accomplishment. It has nothing to do with patting oneself on the back. This, um, like you said, that spiritual um, experience, it gives the peace, the inner peace, the inner quietness. And I hope, dear listener, especially women, sisters, go to Sedona International City of Peace dot org and inquire about this program talk to margaret and help yourself yes and margaret will be there to help you especially with this program the beautiful state margaret i don't know how to thank you for being on this show today it is it was amazing thank you very much and we'll talk again all right thank you so here we are, coming to, an, to the end of another live show of the Sedona Soul Balance. And we are coming to the point where I am, I'm just pointing to you. Uh, on February 15 and 16 and 17, there will be a retreat in Sedona, Reclaiming Your Power. Please click on SedonaSoulBalance.org for more information. This is your host, Anka Arrow-Wolf, with the Sedona Soul Balance Show coming to you live on the BBM Global Network. Thanks for spending your valuable time with me. This is Anka in Sedona signing off. Till next week with a heartfelt aho. You've been listening to Sedona Soul Balance with your host, Anke Otto Wolf. Join Anke each week as she guides you towards a new spiritual awakening and discover how so many have found peace within themselves and their surroundings here on Sedona Soul Balance. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.